<clears throat> Welcome to Weld.com. That dang kid of mine's left me hanging for about the last time. Uh, we started putting this thing together before Christmas. I told him multiple times over Christmas break, get up here and let's get some time on it. He ain't around, so you know I said I was building it for him, but I think I might build it for myself now. When we put this together or started this, you know, the design concept is still clear. I'm comfortable with it, but I'd, I'd made a mistake right off the bat here, got jumped the gun. And what I did was I went ahead and put this end plate on the firebox. And that was a mistake because I needed some way of sealing this door. And so I just, all I had to do was zip these tacks off here and I came in and detailed this flat iron and tacked it on the back side, welded it in there substantially. I just want to keep this face flat. And then by doing that, I went ahead and built this and put uh, a 3 16th by one inch flat on the door on edge so that it will not warp the door. Again, we're building this out of 10 gauge floor plate. We're trying to save weight, create volume and I've done this before, so I'm, I'm not uncomfortable doing this design. In any event, we get this kind of a fit right here, and I'll adjust that slightly. So it's real tight down here at the bottom, and I've got probably 332 second at the top. So it's going to go back together nicely and tight. Uh, now, I notice a couple of, I'm going to put a couple of tacks in here. These are slightly moved out in places. I may have to put a hot tack in here and a hot tack is I'm trying to close this gap just a little bit. I would put a small tack on there and about the time that it cools off, I tap it with a, a hammer and it'll shrink this and lay this in here straight. For some reason, these look a little bowed. It's not critical, you know, and even in that, this is down at the bottom, so I'm not too worried about it, but Today I want to get some weld time in on it since a kid isn't around here to help me. Dang kids anyway. Uh, I want to come in here. I've done a lot of these before and I, my method seems to work pretty good is I'll come in here and I'll grab half of this. I don't want to, I don't want to go down the entire seam, pour a bunch of heat into it. I'll just weld about half of this and then I'll turn it where I'm clear over here on the other side and I'll do like half seams. I'll come in, feather these with a die grinder and come in and finish the rest of the weld. And then this just becomes a button. It's not that big of a deal. I've done a lot of these with smooth material and uh, we'll go back and lay a, a sander on here and make these a sharp point and then pull a little file through them or just hit them with a flapper disc and everything comes out nice and smooth and straight. And then when you paint it, it looks pretty nice. This is all decking material except for what we did up here on top for a design. You know, I'm all about multi-purpose. I inverted this top plate up here so that it is flat and smooth. I didn't have any of the bumps up here because I intend on putting a cast iron grill, a wok, a coffee pot, something. I can be cooking over here using this heat as this thing comes out. This is, uh, this is sitting just like it's going to sit. So this would be the, this would be the top of the firebox and the main chamber has got this hole and it'll invert and be up here. So right now we just want to do some welding, get some gas metal arc welding, ESOB Rebel 235, C25 gas, 035 wire. Uh, I'm going to be running 18 and a half volts. 220 on the wire feed speed. I just want to get a soft, it's an outside corner weld, so it's more cosmetic, but I can assure you it is, it's going to hold this thing. I built a bunch of these and it doesn't take a, a heavy big weld to hold on to anything, even though this thing's going to be getting hot. So let me find my, uh, my gloves and hood. I'll get the old, get the old arc one going with the big vision today. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this thing and make my first weld. There's a tack on the inside. Some of these are on the outside. It's just how we fit them up. But I'm gonna go from here down to the bottom, turn this thing, keep welding. 18 and a half, 220 is what I'm guessing. That's 
seem to have guessed correctly. This is pretty much exactly what I want. As long as I don't get porosity on this edge. Kind of a soft, buttery round weld. It's fine by me. I'm just gonna keep turning it so I can disperse this heat. I don't wanna weld in one area and pop tack. No extra charge for that little slip down there. I'm welding along and rolled that thing right over my knuckle. Jump, I'm all right, I'm all right. That was loud. As many times as I've heard that, you think I'd get used to it. That's a sound I never get used to. All right, one more and then we'll talk. Right about now is the time I can say, even though I like what's going on here, I wish I'd have put just a little bit of gap in here, a little bit more gap. I didn't fit them up super tight, but I wish I'd have put just a little bit more because <clears throat> these out here on this are really corner to corner, but it seems like fitting these, they get a little bit tight. I could go in with a die grinder and open these up, but I'm feeling plum lazy and it's fine. I just wish I'd have opened it up some. In any event, uh, we can kind of do the same thing and demonstrate what the end is going to look like. So let me lay this rascal down. I'll be right back. I'm gonna soften up that wire feed once and experiment, see what it does, but it just doesn't make it just a bit rounder.
I've got a little bug hole of porosity right here and I realize now what it is. I never brush these. This, these are factory edges from when I sheared the material. I never sanded that. Big mistake. Got a little bug hole of porosity. Easily fixed. Easily fixed. Uh, it'll be over here on the side. I'll take a real thin bladed die grinder, cut that out, re-weld it and blend it, sand it in. No big deal. It's a smoker, it'll survive. But that's a mistake on my part. You know? I need to go back in here and check the factory edges and make sure that I wire wheel them or at least touch them with a grinder to get, the, get that mill scale off. I've had this happen to me a lot with um, plasma cut edges. I get that nitrided surface right there and I put two of them together in a corner to corner and get the little bug hole porosity thing going. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to complete this entire thing, uh, skipping around, blending welds in. I think we can see what happened here. When this one gets welded, I'll touch that with a grinder, but when I end up down here, I should be able to just blend it, not have to worry about it. I'll wire brush these. So we're going to continue on with this project. Like I said, I don't think the kid's going to get it anymore. I think it's going to my house. He might be able to use it, but... You know, one of those, uh, one of those deal kids. Anyway, good project, and uh, we'll see if we can't get some time on it and get this thing done up for you. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Bob Moffat with Cali College.